by the end of the first night, I think I was at twenty thousand dollars in Stanley's. Yeah. To say that Katie Lacoste's life changed when her Aztec print rap Stanley Tumblr TikTok went viral would be a complete understatement. It was a wild ride, and we talk all about it in this interview. But I don't want you to get the impression that she got there overnight. Katie had been working as an entrepreneur for quite some time before this happened, and she was really figuring out her business and how to really make it successful. So we talk a lot about all of those different things that it takes to really grow a business and how to sustain it, and what happens when you go viral. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. If you're a maker looking to learn how to use your CO2 laser, whether that's a Glowforge or something else that runs Lightburn like my Thunder Laser, I have a course called You Can Laser that walks you through project-based lessons to help you get confident in using your laser, all while making amazing things. If you want to get more information, you can find that in the description below. Now, on to the interview, and then you go make amazing things. Welcome, Katie, from Frickled and Framed Sign Company. I'm so glad to have you here today for Maker Moments. And why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everyone what you make in your business. Yes. Thank you for having me, Katie. I'm so excited. I feel like my business has changed so much in the last couple months. I used to make everything because it was like, whatever somebody will pay me for, I'll do. <laughs> and then I kind of had goals. You start, after you try everything, you start seeing, okay, I like doing this. I hate doing this. And so I would talk to my husband like, Ugh, I really don't like doing this. My husband hates dust. Um, for him, I think his ultimate goal for me was to not do anything dusty. <laughs> When I started getting hats, he was like, okay, hats, yes. And the, like, the cups, I was like, oh, yeah, the cups are, like, so much easier. And he's, yep, I think you should just only do cups. And I'm like, oh. in the beginning, I couldn't only do cups because, you know, you have to pay the bills. So it was like, what am I going to do? So I would, I was trying to push them as much as I could. But, yeah, my ultimate goal in the end was to only do cups. And I'm pretty much there now. So can we go back to the beginning and talk to me about how did you start your business? Did you know you wanted a laser? Did you have a business before that? So we, when we lived in California, we were just like barely getting by. I got a divorce from my first husband. So I had two kids with him and then I was with my current husband, but it, in California, everything's so expensive. So it was like, it didn't matter what we did. We were just getting by and I couldn't afford to pay like daycare and work at the same time. It was like, I was basically paying to work. Yeah. So I always did whatever I could do to be home with my kids because it just made the most financial sense. So my dad owned his own business my whole life. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'll start my own business, whatever. It started with daycare. I did home daycare. I had seven kids 24 seven. And I realized I don't really love kids. Like I like my own kids, but I just like other people's kids. It really, it wasn't even so much the kids as the parents are crazy. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, no. So I did that for three years. And while I was doing that, I was doing photography. Okay. So once I built up my business, I ran like a group on and did photography for basically nothing. I think I made like $25 a session by the time Groupon took their money. It was, yeah, it was ridiculous. But I did so many sessions. It helped me build my portfolio. And I got so many referrals from it. It was really worth it in the end. So I was doing that for, I think I did photography for nine years. I sold LuLaRoe for a while. Like I got in while it was hot and got out right before it took a turn and then my husband actually had a heart issue and had to have his heart chopped and at that point I was like the main provider I was selling LuLaRoe I was doing photos and after he got like a crappy job he had a bad business partner at the time and so we were like we need to get out of California like whatever we have to do let's just get out of here 
he got a job. He works at Big O Tires now. But we moved here with the promise that he would eventually become a manager. But he had to start at like 16 bucks an hour. Oof. Which, yeah, <laughs> to move, to leave all your family and friends and everything that you've known for literally your whole life for 16 bucks an hour was sketchy. <laughs> but we did it. We moved with like literally nothing. After we paid like first and last month's rent at our new place, we had $600 to move. Wow. Like for gas and the moving truck and everything. So we moved here and we struggled for a little bit, but luckily it was still cheap here then. So we rented like a 4,000 square foot house for $1,400 when we moved. So it was still like crazy, like way cheaper at the time. I can't even imagine. And they wanted us, the landlords wanted us to buy the house and but we weren't ready. He was still hardly making anything. I'm like, there's no way we're going to qualify to buy a house. And I wasn't working because we had no family here to help with kids. I had four kids at this point. And uh, so we finally, after we had to move, because our landlords decided to sell the house before our lease was up, which ended up costing us a ton more. We were still like trying to get caught up for moving. My husband's like, forget it. Like we're buying a house. I'm just banking on the fact that I'll be a manager by then. And I'm like, no, like what? And he's like, we're going to build it. It's fine. By the time it's done, like I'll be a manager. We'll be able to afford it. And so we did and before our house was done. It, we were still in our rental. So I could only do so much in the garage because it wasn't ours. I was making signs like the old school way with the stencils. And oh my gosh, I can't even believe I did that for so long because I have like carpal tunnel and all that weeding ah. was horrible so I knew that if it, I was going to continue that I wanted to get a laser I didn't do photography when we moved because it's so hot here I would basically be taking all summer off because I'm not going to shoot in like 118 signs was basically just my way to have extra money for things I wanted like when I want to go buy like home decor or clothes or if the kids need stuff to pay for extra activities or whatever, it was like just doing signs the old school way work for that. And so it hit a point after we got our house, I started doing a lot of DIY stuff in our house and I just wanted money to pay for that. I was felt bad. My husband was a manager at that point. He did get it. So we did make enough, but, and he was always like, you don't have to work. But when I want to do a project, it was like, I want to do it how I want to do it. And I don't want to take away from the family for this. I just started selling the signs for that. And then finally, it just hit a point. I was like, okay, like I'm tired of doing it this way. Doing signs the old school way is great, but I feel like you're not going to make a t- You can't talk like premium. Changing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I felt like the farmhouse look was going out. So I was like, okay, like I need to get a laser. Where were you selling at this point? What were you selling on Etsy or were you just friends on Facebook? Okay. Yeah. Like I started an Etsy. I think I put two or three things on it, but I don't think that anything ever. Oh, I think I actually did sell one sign that was like Alexa clean the bathroom or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was like really weird. I, mean, I, was, I was all excited. I'm like, oh, wow, well, something actually sold on my Etsy store. Because I think it says I've had an Etsy since I, don't know, I looked it up the other day. The year, and I'm like, oh, really? I definitely didn't sell anything on it for like years and years. It was there, but I didn't really use it. So I was really just, I would make stuff. I would post it on Instagram and Facebook, and like family and friends would order, and a lot of customs, which, okay. but any business is great when you need the money, but you right. probably know, like, customs is so much extra time. Yeah. And, so I was like, no, like the only way this is going to be successful is if I can like start getting stuff to take off that is just like already designed and made. Like I can't keep spending all this time designing every piece from. So I ended up, I told my husband I wanted a laser and he was like, yeah, like you just want a laser to make stuff for your own house. And I'm like, no. Which is funny because I, even to this day, hardly made anything for our own house in the laser. <laughs> and honestly, I make more stuff for him than I do myself. He's <laughs> constantly, make me this, make me that. I'm like, I have to work. Like, I have paying people. I can't just do your stuff all the time. So, yeah, I 
finally talked him into a Glowforge. And I think I wanted the pro. And he's like, oh, that's so much. You're not even going to use it. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's crazy to me that he doubts me because I have, all my businesses have been successful. Daycare, when I shut down, I was full of kids and I was making plenty of money. I was just tired of sick kids at my house all the time. <laughs> and when we left San Diego, I had a huge client base for photos and I was getting like $400 for an hour session, I was booked seven days a week. So yeah. I'm like, how are you doubting me? <laughs> like, I I wouldn't do this for no reason. Like, I'm going to build a business out of it. So we finally had the cash and got a Glowforge. We did buy it. We didn't finance it. But the money that we ended up making to pay it off, I think I paid off in less than two months. Yeah, I made this little angel ornament. It's so funny. Like the most random things are what sells. It's never like something that I make and I'm like, yes, this is amazing. That will like not sell. I won't sell one. But some random little cheesy thing I'll make and I'll sell in insane amounts. I'm like, what? What is going on? Like, why do people where, even like this? Where did you sell that ornament? On Facebook, actually, I had posted it, and I have amazing, we have so many amazing friends and family. Everyone's super supportive. So they've been my biggest support, which is funny because I actually don't like selling to friends and family. <laughs> but they've been amazing, but I'd really rather sell to people I don't know. So that was always my ultimate goal, too. I want to make something that sells, and I don't want to sell to anybody I know. Right. Like, I just want regular friendships, like where people aren't constantly asking me to make things. Yeah. So yeah, my goal was just to get something that took off and stop doing so much custom stuff. And so I ended up, the Glowforge was awesome. I actually love my Glowforge. It's good for certain things. Yeah. I like it better. And so like leather patches and stuff, especially now that I have my big ones set up for the cups, it's hard to do anything but cups because putting the rotary and changing it out that's one thing with business. Like, I feel like a lot of times when you're learning, they'll say, find your niche market. So I feel like I did now, finally, but it was hard to get there. I literally threw like a million things out there and just waited for something to stick, finally. And once it did, it was nuts. <laughs> so talk me through that then. So you bought the Glowforge, paid it off. Amazing. So you were like, okay, this is a thing I can do. I can continue to do this. So then when did you get your first thunder? Was that when you were making bigger signs or you wanted to make bigger signs? Yeah. So I wanted to be able to cut anything bigger. I feel like I, I did a lot of, I do design my own stuff too, but my best sellers were really enough, like things that other people make too, like the lightning bolt, rad little dude, the rad little dude. I haven't made one in a couple of months. So I'm like, wait, what did he even say? That one, I was like, God, I'd love to do it bigger. Nobody was really doing it, but anything bigger than 18 inches. And I just wanted to, I wanted to try like neon signs. And there's just so much that I was tired of being limited to that small space. I love my Glowforge for hats. For acrylic, I actually, now I've gotten the hang of it better on the laser, on the big lasers, but I used to love it for acrylic. And so I was like, like, I need something bigger. I do these military flags for a neighbor he, the ship he was on he's actually stationed in San Diego and so he one day was like hey like every time we leave our ship we give a gift like you get like a something that says like your time like the time you were on the ship then it has a ship I don't know what they call it like a crester I'm not familiar with military talk so he sends me the stuff and I'm like I don't know what any of this means but I put it on so I had made him a flag for his birthday. That's one huge thing if you are trying to build your business and like trying to find, especially if you know someone else who owns a business or make them something for their birthday or Christmas or whatever. That is such a huge thing. And I got so much work so many times from that. So I had just made him a flag with his name on it for his birthday. Super quick to like last minute throw it together from the Glowforge and it just had the Navy logo 
And he was like, oh my gosh, these are so cool. And so the next day he's, hey, can you work with me to get something where like every time someone leaves the ship right now, they actually used to do these paddles with, I think it had their stuff engraved. I actually thought they were really cool. I was like, you want my flag instead of this paddle? (laughs) It's way cooler than anything that I make. Like, I love this. But he was like, no, let's do the flags like with their, he's on the Tripoli. So it had their like crest type thing. And then the dates and name that the people were on it. In the Glowforge, it took three hours. Yeah. So once I started getting a lot from him, like he buys them from me, they buy them from me for $80 shipped. Most of the time I can ship them in one time, but he was buying them like bulk, like 14 to 30 at a time, which is awesome. Except when you have a Glowforge and they're right, three hours running around the clock. Yeah. So I finally hit a point. I think he had ordered like. 30 or something and I'm like okay this is like I have to go bigger and so I looked for a long time and I was just like I so back and forth there's so much like controversy over what laser to get I feel like everybody's got their opinion on it I was just trying to get like the biggest bang for my buck and so I went with the thunder and I had seen one thing I love is when people from the company are actually commenting in groups and like helping people figure it out when something's wrong. And they're awesome about that. So I was like, you know what? I really want to go with thunder and they included everything. Shipping was included. I'm like, okay, let's just do it. So I got the, mine's my biggest one's 51, a hundred. And it was amazing. Like doing that next batch of flags, I was like, oh my gosh, like, how did I do this on the Glowforge all this time? And I had my Glowforge less than a year when I had the first Thunder. And then that one Thunder was great, except like during Christmas, I definitely would hit times where I'm like, yeah, I could probably use two of these if business was like this all year round. And then at this point, were you making enough money that if this was competitive with your photography business or bigger than that? Because to buy a Thunder, that's a pretty big investment. And then to be thinking like, yeah, I might need two. That's, you must have been doing pretty well. It's crazy because I look back, I was doing okay. I was making like three to four grand a month profit. And my parents, they I helped them sell their house in California. They moved here too. And so they were giving me a little bit of money from the sale of their house. So it was one of those things they were like, we'll give you the money or we'll help you out with the machine. I think if I'm going to put money into something, it better pay me something back. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's get this laser. And my dad's, he worked very hard. He did construction. So he worked like hard for his money. The harder you work for it, I feel like the harder it is for you to spend it. So he was very much like that. He didn't invest in anything, but he does believe in me. And he's all about, if you want to use money to make money, I'll help you. He helped with the first laser and I was nervous about it. Even still, you question yourself. Yeah. I am like, I know I'm doing it now with this other laser, but is it going to be the same? What if something happens? And this was right after COVID too. So you're thinking, what if everything shuts down again? If it's hard to get stuff again. And now I've got this like. $13,000 machine sitting in my garage and what am I going to do with it? Try and sell it to somebody else. But I'm pretty motivated. I literally work like 24 seven. So I'm like, we're just going to do it and it's going to be good. And it was. (laughs) So after the Glowforge Christmas, then what did you offer that next Christmas? How did you decide what to start offering? Because I think that's a place people struggle a lot is like, where to even start because you get the laser and you're like, I can make so many things. So which ones do you make and how many? And did you struggle with that? Or was that something that came easy? I get so many requests from friends and family. I feel like that's, I ended up just getting so many requests like, oh, can you do a cutting board? Okay. And it's, you're winging it, right? You're like, oh yeah, I can do that, but I've never done it. Yeah. (laughs) And I did a lot of cutting boards. I actually, that first Christmas I had, just finally put the rotary I think my rotary sat for three months I was so scared to figure it out because I was still like 
learning big laser things from Glowforge laser things. And I was just like so intimidated by it. And I had seen full wrap cups done on like Etsy and stuff like a couple of years ago. And I was like, those are the coolest thing ever. I want to be able to make those. It's kind of like, I always loved epoxy cups, but I felt like they were so much work. They are. I was like, just never, I could never see myself. Like it was one of those things where, how they make that joke. You buy all the, spend all this money trying to make this one thing. I'm like, that's me in that case. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to dive into that because I just feel like it is so much work for each cup then it's ha- probably harder to be profitable. Oh, yeah. And ultimately, we do these things, right, because we're trying to stay home for our family, for our kids, or at least I am. And so I'm like, my ultimate goal is like, what can give me the most time with my kids with the least amount of work for me? Yep. So I started, I finally put the rotary in. I started doing the cups. And I spent like three days just like I had other orders I was just like no like blinders on like I had to figure this out because that is such a pain to put the rotary in and out so in that the beginning when you only have one laser and you're still trying to keep up with your other jobs you really do to figure out the rotary you have to devote like just a couple days I feel like to just like really focusing on it figuring it all out throwing test cups in there and so I did I mastered it was before you released your video too I remember I was like no there's no videos on like how to really do this and so I did it for three days finally figured out like I was asking questions getting like roundabout answers and I'm like come on like there's got to be something I'm missing and when I finally got it I was so excited and then I think your video came out like the next day (laughs) I'm like really I spent three days trying to figure that out and I could have just watched her video now (laughs) like the timing but it ended up I felt like I finally mastered it and so I started trying to put them out there but I feel like it was hard with cups too like everything else my client base is used to me being like catering to them right and everything they want is custom They, they all want a different design and they don't realize people spend hours I was spending hours working on every single design and then you send it and they're like, Oh, I don't like it or change this or change that. We take it so personal. I feel like when it's our own design and say, it's honestly almost like depressing sometimes when you put like your heart and soul into a design and you send it over and people want like something off some other design off Etsy. Like they just want you to copy someone or something. Oh, do it exactly like this. I'm like, but I mean, this one, it's so much better. I don't want to copy someone. Yeah. So I ended up doing quite a few cups for Christmas, personalized ones. That The Aztec print that went viral, I had started that print on one of the cheap 30-ounce tumblers. Yeah. So I sold quite a few of those that Christmas, and I was so excited. I'm like, yes, like cups are starting to get a little bit of traction. But I was also getting a lot of custom, which it was good in the beginning because I, you do have to develop those like designs initially anyways. So I tried to take each one as an opportunity of, okay, what can I, what kind of design can I do that I could sell to everyone? I tried to stay away from copyrighted stuff like Disney. I can't list it on my website. I can't list it on Etsy, really not without chancing, like getting reported. It's just not worth it to me. So I just tried to like discourage anyone who wanted any of those things and try and come up with anything I could that I could use later on multiple tumblers. And so, yeah, that went pretty well. I sold a lot of tumblers that Christmas and, oh, hats, baby beanies went crazy that I don't know why. I don't, again, it's, you never know what's going to go crazy. But a customer had written me on Instagram, hey, can you make a baby beanie? I'm like, oh, sure. I put a patch on a baby beanie and they started going crazy too. But you have to try things, right? That's a thing is you are going to have, you have to be okay with sometimes things fail unless you're going to make everything from just people you know and not make any money. 
besides that, you have to be okay with that. Yeah. And probably the baby beanie and the lightning bolt that everybody else makes were like my top sellers up until the cup. Tell me about the Stanley craze and what went viral and what happened. And I want to hear the whole story. So my husband, the one who never wanted me to get a laser, <laughs> he is always, he always pushes his ideas. So when Stanley's came out, I ha- I bought Stanley's and it was funny because he was always like, who is going to have a ton of cut? And then he started buying Stanley's. I think he bought me like four for Christmas. <laughs> and so we had quite a few. And so I was doing other cups and he, he needed to do Stanley's. And they were, like, super intimidating to me just because they were so expensive. That was before. In the beginning, they didn't have all the dupes like they have now. Like, it was like you had, you could do it on a Stanley and that was it. And if you messed it up, you just lost your, back then, $40, now $45. And so I was just, like, super hesitant. And I finally did try. And I think... I made the first mistake too. I did it on a mat, a soft mat. Okay. Because I had two of the same color. And so, and there still wasn't a ton of people doing them then. And so there wasn't like a ton of chatter in the group that I could look and people hadn't said yet, don't do soft mat. And so I tried it and it was horrible. I was like, this is not good. This is not working. I don't want to do these. I don't want to ruin another cup. And still, like, my husband kept saying, you just need to do the Stanley's. You just need to do the Stanley's. So he had a black one, and he wanted the auto part one that I do because he's in that, like, industry, the auto yeah. industry. So he had been asking for a cup. So when I found that design, I was like, oh, well, that's perfect for you because I'm not drawing all those. I don't know enough about cars. It throws <laughs> me nuts. People send me messages and want me to edit it. Like, Can you make a diesel part one? I'm like, nope. I bought that design from someone that's- else. And I know nothing about parts. I'm not changing. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so he had been wanting it. I he I had made him one on one of the cheap 30 ounce no name cups. And so he's I won out in Stanley. And so I did one and it was horrible. Again, on a non mat cup. I'm like, what is going on? We were trying to figure out everything. Getting around the tabs was definitely like nobody had really talked about it yet a couple people were doing it but they weren't really saying how they did it yeah and finally I saw someone say something about they used their four inch head and I'm like oh I've never even used that one because everything else I've cut has always I only ever needed my short one and so I'm like like we even tried bending the tabs my husband's like bent it and like when I bent it back it snapped off I'm like oh yeah that definitely is not gonna work so I put the four inch one on and it worked and I was like oh my god I did it it worked all this time and it was that one stupid little thing and I started I have a friend Desert Hunter's her name's Desert Honey Sweet Teas on Instagram. She has a ton of followers. When I first met her, I think she had 25,000 followers on TikTok. And I happened to randomly see it. I'm like, how did you get so many followers? And so she has she's, has a really good following on Instagram too. And she had been asking me to do her Stanley. And I was like still so nervous about doing them. Yeah. On, at the point. And she her Stanley color was bay. Which, if anyone knows about Stanley and the bay color, it's like the light blue. And it's like, people sell them for $400 with dents in them. And she's, oh, yeah, no, just do it. I'll just bring it over. And I'm like, do you even know how much this thing is worth? I don't want to, I don't want to do, put that in my machine. You're crazy. So she wanted the Aztec pattern, but with like her logo and this headdress like she makes shirts so she has some graphics that she buys from other artists too and so she had wanted some of them on her cup so I like reworked my design and made it for her and I did it and it came out good I was like thank god (laughs) 
like the Stanleys are so nerve wracking. And I made it. I did like a little video. I'm like, oh, she's got a ton of followers and she's so awesome. I love other makers and friends who share other people's stuff and like collaborate. And so we've quite a few times, she buys like hat patches for me and stuff. So quite a few times we've collaborated on things. And I always get a couple followers at least from it. And so I made the video. I posted it. And... I think I tagged her in it. She didn't even notice. And then all of a sudden, she, her friend saw it. She was like, oh my gosh, did you see that? Her cup? They were at an in-person event, like market thing in Tucson. I think it was in Tucson. And they were on the way home. And so they just like randomly stopped at my house. She lives like two miles away. And she's like, my cup, where's my cup? And so I gave it to her and she's like, oh, you need to post it and tag me as a collaborator. And I'm like, I she had sent me a message or something that said that and I'm like I don't even know what that is Instagram's always changing things and I'm like what are you talking I tagged you and I don't know mine doesn't even have a collaborator option like I've only got 500 followers or something I think I was at maybe 700 or something like that and she's no send me the video so she said it, she posted on hers and she tagged me as a collaborator and I think that video ended up at like 38,000 views Wow, because now she's got 60,000 followers on Instagram, I think. So it was getting good traction, but I didn't have any Stanleys. I didn't have anything set up. I was like, people were writing me and they wanted like that same cup. I'm like, yeah, good luck. Like that cup, $400 on the buy sell trades. Like you're not getting that cup. <laughs> and then everyone wanted my own cup, this color one, eucalyptus. And those were all out of stock. And so I'm like, how do people even sell these? What am I going to do? All these people want cups now. And I can't even get cups. I was like, definitely not prepared. I feel like you can never be prepared really when this stuff happens, yeah. which is frustrating. If only we could plan it. Say, like, okay, <laughs> this video is going to go viral. And I did sell a couple. I ended up starting to sell the dupes, the Mars 40 ounce dupes from Save a Cup. And... So I sold, like, she has a lot of her following is all basically that, like, Western vibe and a lot of other Western boutique owners follow her. And so when she posts, like, our hat collaborations, like, I would get a lot of, like, wholesale patch orders and stuff like that. So when she posted the cup, I started getting a lot of people wanting, like, their logo mixed in with the asset crank, what hers was. But since I couldn't do Stanley's, we just did the Mars ones, and those were going good. And then I was still getting pretty consistent, like, customs, but still not nothing crazy. I think I had sold, like, from her video, I think I sold, like, 20 cups. Okay. And so not, like, life-changing, and it wasn't continuous. Like, once that video died, it was gone. It was, like, I had a couple scragglers every once in a while but nothing crazy yeah until the tiktok and i'm not on tiktok so i don't even i like saw this through instagram stuff of just the you were like i can't take any more <laughs> oh my gosh it is a blessing and a curse you can never be prepared for these things and i know people like pray for these things to happen to them and I am so thankful that it did, but in the t- in that time, it was insanity. And I don't think people understand like the level of insanity. We're like one women shows, right? Like we yeah. don't have a whole crew. I don't have a social media person. I don't have a person who like responds to emails. I am doing everything myself. So, honestly, it's funny that the TikTok went viral because I feel like I neglect my TikTok like crazy. I'm not young. I'm almost 40. (laughs) I'll be 40 this year. And so, I'm just like, I post mostly on Instagram and I would forget to post on TikTok. So, I started posting and it was funny because I posted it and it was like days later that it went viral, which was weird to me. And... We were in this project. So we did our backyard. It was like normal life, right? Like I'm cheap. And so I'm always trying to save a buck. And so 
a neighbor was giving away a pergola like a year ago. They had posted this wood pergola and they're like, does anybody want this? And I'm like, yeah, like it was one of my friends. I'm like, of course, that thing's $3,000. Yeah, I want it. And she's really, I'm like, yeah, my dad can move anything. I guarantee you we can get this <laughs> thing handled. And she's like, okay, I don't know. We're not for sure if we're going to get rid of it or not. I'm like, okay. So a year later, I thought pergola was like a long gone thing. And she's, hey, do you still want that pergola? Yeah, I didn't even know it was an option. I had actually been looking at them, but I'm so cheap. I'm telling you, I would look at them and I'm like, oh, I just don't want to spend that much money. I could spend that on a new laser. You know what I mean? No, like I don't want to do that. She's, yeah, if you still want it, I want to come look at it. So my dad went and looked. He's oh, yeah, we can definitely get it. And so we got some guys from my husband's work to come help us after work. It was on a Sunday. And we're like waiting for everyone to show up and all of a sudden, like my Instagram, funny enough, that's where I noticed it first, was my Instagram, I started getting all these followers. And I'm like, what's going on? I usually get like one follower a month. Like, huh, where are all these people coming from? And so I was still just like trying to figure out. And then my Shopify started going off because by this point, I had started like figuring out the whole like how to get Stanley's so I had listings for them but they were it wasn't really selling and so all of a sudden like the ka starts going off and I'm like okay wait what I'm selling things like a lot of things what what's going on and so I finally look on TikTok and I'm like holy crap my videos got I think at that point it had 20,000 views maybe oh. and I was like okay this is good is the white aztec which one is it it was this one that one okay and is it just just spinning? that cup spinning yeah. just the cup spinning it's funny because people are like wait can i see the video and i show them and they're like that's it <laughs> yeah i'm not in it like it was i literally post almost the same video for every single yeah. cup that i make I don't know what made it go crazy, but it did. I don't know if it was the song. It was a Morgan Wallen song. Like, yeah. That's what my husband swears that it was. But I've tried that whole look up trending songs and it's never worked. So it was literally just, I saw it on another video. I'm like, oh, I like that song. That'll work with this cup because it's like country. It's like a country cup. Whatever. There was no, I didn't do crazy hashtags. I don't think, I think I even hashtag like. FYP and Stanley and custom Stanley. I think it was like nothing crazy. And so it just kept going. And so we go to move this pergola, <laughs> which was like a whole saga in itself. And the whole time my phone is, and I'm just like, whoa, this is, this happens. This really happens. Like I hear people talk about this, but oh my God, like it's happening. <laughs> so we get the pergola moved. And we, me and my husband go in our jacuzzi like every night almost. And so we're in the jacuzzi and it's still going off, like consistent. <laughs> the views on the video are like, just keep going. And we're just like watching it like 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. And we're just like, when is it going to stop? <laughs> Does this keep going forever? And then the orders just kept coming. So... By the end of the first night, I think I was at like $20,000 in Stanley. Yeah. And I had like none of them, by the way. <laughs> so I was like, oh, dang. What? How am I going to find them? What am I going to do? Yeah. And so... It just kept going and going and every night in the jacuzzi, because it took so long for the cups to come, the chaos didn't really start until like a couple days in. Because once all the cups started showing up, I was getting like 30, 40 packages a day sometimes. <laughs> and like the Amazon people, they would hand me packages and I'd be like, oh, that's it. And they'd be like, no, there's 28. And I'm like, what? <laughs> And one day, I think there was like 50 or something. I'm like, 15? The guy said 15. 50. I'm like, no, 15? And he's, no, 50. I'm like, 
oh my god what did I get myself into like by the time I would get all the boxes empty more would show up and I was just like oh my god what am I doing? I don't have room for all this stuff what turnaround but time had you promised your customers at this point I think my website which was funny because my website was a wreck I had like never hardly sold anything on it if I did it was usually like a custom order someone didn't have Venmo and they wanted to pay like some app that I didn't have and so I'd be like oh I'll just make you a listing on my website that was usually what it was used for I would list things but they don't just magically sell like you really have to push them so I was mostly selling from my Etsy not my website so my website was a wreck the customers my policies were a wreck everything was a mess because no one ever looked at it and I never thought I was gonna go viral so I was just like what I don't even know so everything I think said one to two week turnaround okay and I tried to update my like social media to keep like on my bio to say okay like it went from one to two weeks to like two to four weeks and I was still really not sure I had sold like over 400 cups yeah and it takes 45 minutes for one in the laser yeah so I was like calculating my head and I'm like I think I can get these done in four weeks if I sleep like four hours a night and that's basically what I was doing I was and the, the hardest part too is the amount of others on top of the orders when something goes viral, everybody wants you to make them a custom cut. Of course. And, and so I'm getting at least 20 emails a day asking for a custom cup, which I know I can't do at this point. There's no way I could do anything but that cup. It was insanity. And I don't even have room to store 400 cups. <laughs> so I was ordering like in batches. Like I would plan it. Okay. Because I think... It wasn't even all Stanley's. I had sold like probably 200 of the Mars, the okay. fake one. And and theirs went out of stock. I like sold them out of stock. So I had to start finding them. I was buying them off eBay. I was buying them, paying more for them by, on Amazon. I had to end up raising the price. Like when they were selling so well and then all of a sudden they sold out I'm like oh my gosh now I have to pay 15 bucks more for every cup so I'm gonna have to adjust the price it was chaos so I was basically I knew I could only do I think it was 20 a day at 400 and still continuous orders coming so it wasn't like okay there was just that day and then that was it I was still selling I think for two months I didn't sell less than a thousand dollars a day in wow. cups and it was insanity the first month at one month I had sold sixty thousand dollars wow yeah yeah and now I think I I I finally passed six figures for the year in sales not profit yeah (laughs) but in sales it's hard because Stanley's are so expensive yeah like now majority of my sales I can get them under a hundred dollars but there is still I do have some of the special colors and I get the haters still on TikTok they're like how could who would pay that much for a cup people do but I wouldn't (laughs) but people do I have people that buy cups from me for 240 dollars yeah and then it honestly that's been the thing too is don't shortchange yourself because it is a lot of work people don't understand because they see everything on time lapse and they're like oh she puts a cup in a machine for five minutes and she thinks she can charge a hundred dollars for it and oh like some of those comments fire me up like I try to keep my cool but if only they (laughs) me behind the scenes like prepping the cups you know what it's like to take handles off 400 cups? Ugh. Oh, my God. It, I had neighbors coming over and just taking off handles with me. Like, just we're just sitting there, taking them off, talking. Like, oh, yeah, I'll bring over some white cloths, and I'll help you take off handles. I'm like, okay. And I just had, like, my whole work table, solid cups. 
but people don't realize so much gets into it. The prepping with the handle, initially I was taping them all off, which was a lot of work. For the logo? Yes. Okay. Finally, I had enough time to like really get my template dialed in and make it so that it just didn't go over the logo. So once I stopped taping, that was like life changing. I was like, okay, now all I have to do is take the handle off. But then 45 minutes in the laser, then I switch it, then they go soak and cleaner, and then I'm scrubbing like right. 20 cups a day. And then people forget, like, the packing boxes cost money. I spend usually, I think it's almost two something a box. Yeah. The bubble wrap costs money. There's a lot of things. Etsy takes their fees. My website takes their fees. And when you're selling a cup that costs you so much to get, and you're paying, like, whatever Etsy is, like, 6%, they're getting a huge chunk because that cup, I, I have to sell right. it for so much because that cup costs so much. So. The reality of it, like when people say, oh, how can you charge that much? It's because my laser costs $12,000 and I do put a lot of love into the cup. Each cup gets like hand cleaned. I know the laser runs 45 minutes, but even makers, I feel like go, oh, the laser does it. So I feel bad charging, but you're going to pay to replace the tubes in that laser when they go yeah. out. You're the one cleaning that laser. What happens if that laser breaks? Are you going to have the money to buy a new one because you're charging, like, nothing for your stuff? Yeah. Stanley's are expensive. And so this is, like, my message to makers. Stop undercharging for them. If someone's willing to buy that cup, Stanley makes these cups for nothing. Yeah. And they charge $45. But we put more work into these cups. And people are, I've seen people that charge like $20 to engrave one. I'm like, what are you going to do if you mess the cup up? You can't even pay to replace the cup at that point. So what happens when it gets lost in shipping? What happens if it gets damaged in shipping? Like you're paying for that. So I feel like a lot of makers, and I used to do it too with other, like my early stuff. You feel like you have to go in competitive, right? I'm going to go in cheaper because then people will buy it for me. But that's not usually the case. Right. It's hard. That's it's part of the curse of going viral. Everyone has their opinion and they want to tell you. And so yeah. you got to get thick skin also because you're used to being like a small shop that had a very manageable amount of orders every week and you were getting things out within 24 hours. And now you're having people because everyone's used to the Amazon world that it's going to ship the next day. So I'm getting like nasty emails, like, where's my cup? And it's just, and it's all about how you approach. <laughs> so most of the time I'm like, someone will say, oh, I haven't got my cup yet. It's been two weeks or there was a lot of people who it was like three days and they're like, where's my cup? I'm like, oh my gosh. Like they take 45 minutes. I can only do one at a time and I have over 400 to make. I promise I'm, it's coming. Like it is coming. But it's hard. Like, we've created with Amazon this world where people expect their stuff quick. And so it's very hard for makers. And so you do definitely. Is it a blessing? Absolutely. It has been, like, the hugest blessing. But it does come with a lot. And you think of, okay, I do this to be home with my kids and spend time with, be there for my family. And... I was not for a month straight. I was stuck in the garage. It was insanity. I became so close with like my UPS driver, my Amazon driver, like it was insanity and issues happen. You lose a lot of cups came dented. Amazon is the worst. So that was a huge thing. And makers forget like they don't include things like that in the price. There's a lot of headaches that come with Stanley's. There's strip screws that spin. You have to go crazy on the handle to get them out. There's work that goes into them. And if people are willing to pay that much for a cup that Stanley makes in two seconds, they should pay for our time. I feel like it's worth it. <laughs> how have you transitioned now that you are starting to do more cups? Like, how do you decide what designs to do? And how are you thinking about 
continuing that so that you can continue to grow with this business, not depending on something going viral again. That was the hardest thing too, as it was going viral in your head, you're like, I need to make more designs. I need to get more cups out. Like I got to keep the momentum going, but there was no time to put other cups in the laser. Yeah. Like after maybe three weeks, I would finally, okay, let's do this one, throw it in just to have something to, cause I had nothing else to post. Like all I was doing was the same cups over and over again. So I was like, Oh, here, let's see this design in this color. And then that color. And so I did finally, once it got a little caught up to where it was like a consistent vibe, like with all the cups were out prepped with the handles off for a couple days, then it would give me enough time that I was only spending time in the morning shipping, which was still a lot <laughs> shipping. I don't know how people can ship so fast. It takes forever. Maybe it's because the Stanley is so fragile and I'm like wrapping them so much, but I feel like it shipping took me hours and hours every day. So finally, once I got a buffer, I was able to do a couple, but nothing has picked up the same momentum as that cup. Yeah. I still sell a few a day. It was for a couple months. I would still get a thousand dollars in sales a day. It's definitely dwindled, but it's okay. <laughs> like I've been like, we had a lot going on, so it dwindled at a good time. I had my son's graduation. We had family in town. Because literally, I hadn't been able to even clean my house for that whole month. Like, I was running on fumes. I was literally only sleeping four hours a night switching cups. It, it was a lot. And so it felt good to finally be caught up enough to go, I can, like, clean the house and do laundry and like actually put laundry away not just take it out put it in the basket and put it in my room like I can actually yes. find find your gloves yeah. <laughs> and I have two teenagers yes. so you should you would think they would pick up the slack we did have a family meeting early on because after the first week of it I was like insane I was losing my mind I'm like I need help help me please like at least take trash out if it's overflowing take the trash out so yeah it was a lot we had like family meeting my husband you guys have to help and after my husband makes pretty good money at what he does and it was funny two or three days in we're in the jacuzzi I would literally get out of the jacuzzi come in switch cup go back that was like our only time together really was like these two hours in the jacuzzi at night and that was the only time I would really leave the garage besides bed. But when you're that busy, you are basically dead to your family. Like you live in the garage and that's it. My friend would be like, can we go to lunch? I'm like, no. She'd be like, can we go get pedicures? I'm like, no, there's none of that happening. I have to get this done because it stresses me out. Customers think a lot of times I think that we're like not sending their stuff out because right. we're just like right. out partying or something <laughs> I paid for my stuff and I want my stuff I it bugs me if I have an order like that's not out within 24 hours it drives me insane so it was really hard for like my OCD with things to go into this whole like life of pissed off customers and yeah like I was really out of my control but I think now that's why I've just like with cups it just makes the most sense to just switch over and just only really do that I could still do hats and that's what I keep contemplating keeping the Glowforge for and honestly I do love designing like I would love that's the one thing I love about having consistent selling cups is I'm not spending so much time designing for customers because I haven't right. been taking so many customs and so I'm in that vibe of where I'm just changing cups all day and shipping. And then I still have time to handle my life, <laughs> take a shower and take my kids to school and maybe even volunteer at school if I'm lucky. But I would love to do more designing and selling files. I got so busy. I never have time to design. And that's one thing I love is to design like for myself yeah, and not for everyone else. So I would love to do more of that. But it's nice to have a life again, too. Like, I think, I don't remember what it was. I went, it was after the month 
and I went to Costco and I remember my husband called and he's like, how's Costco? I'm like, oh, it feels so good to be able to leave the garage and just not stress about work right now. Be able to have normal conversations with adults and just not be in the garage, not be at the house, period, and not be touching a cup. <laughs> My hands were just like from washing that many cups. They were oh, like yeah. feeling off. You have had such a crazy ride. What advice do you have for people who want to make it work and they're just trying to figure it out? How would you suggest they start out or what's your best advice for really getting started? Do everything you can possibly do and post as much as you can possibly post. I think we all, it's really easy to get frustrated. I see it a lot in the groups. Like people will post on Etsy and they're like, oh, it didn't sell. Yeah, it doesn't. And I posted a ton before I really got much sales from Etsy. I had to post a ton and I've heard people say 20 is the magic number, 20 listings before your Etsy starts to get traction. And I feel like it takes forever. I hate making listings on anybody else, but like figuring out what to type. Oh, it's the last thing I ever want to do is make a listing. I just want to make one listing and that one listing to go viral forever and never have to make another listing. <laughs> so it's, I feel like daunting thinking like, it's bet, 20 doesn't sound like a lot, but once you actually write the first one, it is a lot of work initially So I feel like you definitely have to go in with determination, but don't get frustrated when you don't get likes because I still get posts that get no likes, even after going viral. It's so hit and miss. So you just never know. And really just, I was always so frustrated when I would read people that would say, find your niche. It became like the annoying comment when, especially when you're struggling, you're like, I'm trying to find my niche and I'm not finding it. (laughs) So... I was like, how do people find it? What do you do? You can really just try everything. And I feel like the process of trying everything, you're going to figure out what you like and you don't like. So like wood, I have to tell you, I did wood. I've got splinters today. I'm like, how did I only do wood stuff for so long? So I know that I don't love doing wood, but I am like, I love money. So when people do throw a big order, I will still take it. But it is really just trying everything you could possibly try. And I think a lot of times too, when you find something that you love, like love to work with, you put more passion into it. And people like, I knew that I always wanted to do cups. So I feel like I put more effort into that. And obviously now it's paid off. But in the beginning, it was just like, you're trying to pay off your laser, right? So it's please, like, I'll take anything I can possibly take. But by doing that, I think it helps you, like, find your groove, find what you like and don't like, test things, and eventually you get there. But it's, I've done this for, like, laser-only stuff, I think going on three years. I think I got my first Glowforge in October. So October, it'll probably be three years. And I don't know. I feel like I just finally got to where I want to be, so it's hard to be there and I think too a lot of importance in your business is remember what you're doing it for yeah like I was only really doing it to just add an extra income because everybody wants bigger and better right like we want a bigger house we need a bigger house because we're one room short we didn't buy this house like forever so just I was like oh I'll do it and it'll help contribute towards that end goal but I never said I'm gonna get rich off selling a cup or anything like that like I didn't I don't want to be the maker who has no time for her family right this is just a side like extra money for our family I'm glad that it's the business that it is but I only can handle so much growth to stay what I want that's why I'm just it's easier to just limit it to what fits in my garage and what fits in my life yeah and what keeps me happy because Ultimately, if you're living in your garage, it's not healthy. It's a blessing, but it's not. I, it's a blessing that I have the garage and I can pay for the garage. But it's like a healthy life is like the balance, the work balance. So going viral is amazing. But the 
life is amazing too you want to live it like i promise nobody wants to be stuck in their garage for (laughs) that long if you were to do it again today knowing what you know now would you buy your glowforge or would you go straight to a bigger laser that runs on light burn i would absolutely buy my glowforge and why i think the glowforge is a good stepping stone of even with design background it was a good like introduction to like how lasers work yep i can use power tools and i'm pretty like good with technical things but lasers i feel like a whole different world (laughs) and so having the glowforge the convenience of being able to just stick something in and click leather and go was so nice because even though people post settings there really is such a huge variation from laser to laser yep so it's like you really do have to test it and nobody wants to do that people just want a tester what you see in the group all the time what's the settings for this yeah and i can try the same setting and it's not even going to cut through or the engraving will be too light or whatever you really do have to like take that time and invest it into every material and learning it, which is hard sometimes, especially when you're trying to take like any work you can possibly get. You're spending so much time designing or whatever, customizing something, and then you just want it to be done. And it, so, and you don't want to, especially in the beginning, spend a bunch of money on the material, right? Like, you're like, oh, like I can't afford to waste a whole cup or waste a whole piece of wood or. So you're really trying to find like the cheapest way to do everything. But in the end, you end up spending more money. I feel like wasting because you don't just test it in the beginning. It's so funny. If I try and do something like easy and then I go back and test later, I'm like, oh, that would look so much better if I just tested it in the first place. And so I end up just going, whatever, I'm just going to put it in the Glowforge because I know it's going to come out the way that I like it. And I don't have to do all this testing. But it came in so handy like just learning how to clean everything clean the lenses it's definitely a lot easier and smaller and especially if for someone doing it out of their house it's nice to like easy to get it in there and set it up so I feel like it's just such a good starting point just throw it in there click the button still like oh so much easier if it did cups I honestly would have probably got another one. I've heard of people having issues with their glow cord, but I've been super lucky. But it's awesome. It's I love what I do. I couldn't imagine doing anything else now. 